And we are back on the air, son. It is like a miracle to be back on the air with you, sir. I enjoy it myself. I can tell you do. Ow, son of a... What did you do, sir? I swear to God, something just bit me. Uh, really? Yeah. I'm making that up. Okay. So, well, then why did you swear to God? Oh, man. Well, because, I mean, I think he's listening. Yeah, well, you find Maybe he's going to bit me. I don't know. Yeah. That's... All right. All right. Sports. Yes. Everything's pretty well settled with Major League Baseball. We're down to the magic number days. Uh, that's right. It's the last week of Major League Baseball. Uh, the oh, Tampa Bay God. Buccaneers are a half game in front of the Yankees. Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays are a half game in front of the New York Yankees. Uh, Minnesota clinches the American League Central. Uh, Texas clinches the American League West. The wild card team is going to be either New York or Tampa Bay. So those teams, unless some, barring some bizarre occurrence, those are going to be your four teams in the playoffs in the in the American League. Okay. Uh, let's see. National League. National League East. The Phillies are in complete command. There's no way the Braves are going to catch them. Uh, although technically, for some reason, I think it's mathematically possible, but I would be holding my breath. Right. National League Central. Cincy. Same thing. They've got that. They're done. A National League West, San Francisco is a half game in front of San Diego. Um, the wild card, uh, you have San Diego in first place with Atlanta with a game behind San Diego for the wild card spot. It is conceivable that the Colorado Rockies might all of a sudden get one more surge and pass the two of them. They had a hell of a surge recently, oh, didn't they? Oh, man, man, what a surge. They, that means they came from nowhere to be major contenders, right. but they seem to be losing a little bit of steam here. Uh, how about NCAA football? Yeah, about that. Well, how about that? What do you think? Uh, here's what I think. If you cough the ball up four times in the fourth quarter, you're probably going to lose. And we did lose by one possession. South Carolina lost by uh, effectively one possession, eight points. If South Carolina does not give the ball up, they win that game. Right. They win that game going away. Uh, but here's I, here's what I did like about South Carolina in that game. We moved the ball. South Carolina moved the ball with authority on a good defense. They scored on three plays uh, right. in under a minute. And on actually, offer. being the armchair quarterbacks that we are, yeah. we are sitting here thinking, why don't you just push the ball down the field? But when you throw to Alshon Jeffrey 20 yards down the field and he runs for another 30 yards, you don't go, slow down, Alshon. No. So if you can get it in the end zone in three plays, you get it in the end zone in three plays. So what's the problem? How do we get South Carolina to stop blowing these games? Auburn and everybody, uh, they, th our weakness has been exposed. You can basically wear our defense down. You know my sentiment on this. You I know do. my sentiment on this. Who? What's the fly in the ointment? Uh, as far as the SEC or? No, as far as the South Carolina team is concerned. Steven Garcia. Steven Garcia is the fly in the ointment. Yeah. Look, he had an unbelievable Statistically, first half. Statistically, he had a great game. But the problem is it's in the second half. You have to play 60 minutes of really right. good football. Well, Steven Garcia is incapable of playing 60 minutes of good football. The only reason we, uh, the only reason he hadn't screwed up before is because we were just running the ball so much. I would disagree with Steven Garcia being incapable. I think that those fumbles that he had were as much a function of the defender as him not taking care of the ball. It's completely his head. Well, yes. Okay, I got you. Spurrier has been on his case since he got there that when you're scrambling with the ball and you're running, you cover the you football. Cut, not only do you cover the football, but you're the quarterback. Right. When you figure you've gone as far as you're going to go, you don't put your head down, barrel in the defender. You go down because the ground cannot cause a fumble. And if you're down, it doesn't matter if he spears you and that ball comes out. You're down. You don't lose the ball. That's if right. Garcia had gone down on those two plays, oh, and his on knees two consecutive positions, if he had been down, it wouldn't have mattered. We would have kept the ball. We would have won the game. But he has this idea that he's Tim Tebow. He is not. He's not even Cameron. Uh, what was Newton. It? He's not even Cameron Newton. Well, yeah, and I, you know what? To, to Garcia's credit, he can run the football. He is a mobile guy. Yes, he can. He just can't hold on to it. I think what I think uh, part of what developed that is when he ran against Furman and Georgia and Southern Miss, he was able to pop people and back them up. I mean, we remember the first game, him running over Southern Miss's safety and spinning his way into the end zone for the sure. first rushing touchdown. But at least, finally, Steven Garcia has more passing touchdowns than he does running touchdowns. He shot the team in the foot. Uh, it wasn't just Sorry, him. this is his third year at quarterback. No, no, no. I'm you sorry. You when just, you give up 500 you know, I, yards I, I, of combined I, offense, you can't just yeah, blame it on Yeah, because the Steven defense Garcia. is on the field too much. Yes, but the defense wasn't only on the field too much because of Steven Garcia. Let's not forget that not all of Auburn's points were scored in the fourth quarter. 
they ground us out at the line of scrimmage. And no defense can stand to that, especially when your running attack is Michael Dyer, Mario Fannin, and Cam Newton. Those guys are all stellar rushers. And they're good, but without Cameron they're Newton, rushers. without Cameron Newton, oh, Auburn, Auburn loses have that a chance. Game. But with Auburn Cameron to be Newton, a completely different team without Cameron with Cameron Newton, Auburn has a chance to win the SEC. And you know what? Not Auburn, just the SEC. You know what Cameron West. Newton never did in What's sixty that? minutes of football? Throw an interception. He never fumbled the ball. Well, that's true. But two guys on Auburn. He did, ran and we like a maniac all over us. Right. Okay. Plenty of opportunities. Took plenty of shots and hits. Yep. Never coughed the ball up. Stephen Garcia, you can bet, is going to cough the ball up. I agreed with Spurrier when he took him out and put I, him Connor oh, Shaw. I did not. I did not at all because Connor Shaw committed an even worse and even more egregious error and tossed interceptions in critical moments in the game. Well, that's and because think, he comes in cold, you know. I think had Stephen Garcia gone back in and Spurrier had said. When you run that football, cover it up, or you're out of here. He's been telling him that for three years. Right. And it's difficult, and it's still difficult to be it. the man on the sidelines. It's, it's, that's it's, what they pay the big bucks for. If yeah. I got a quarterback who just will not do this, he will not go down. Mm-hmm. I say, look, I'm sorry. But, you know, it's, I, I know, and a lot of people are upset with Spurrier because he's given Stephen Garcia a hard time about this. I'm sorry. I side with Spurrier on this. Well, he's tired of telling him. Yeah. If he had, if if he had listened to him and do as he was instructed, do as he, as he'd been taught, th- that game is ours. We are four and zero in the top ten, going against Alabama in a couple of weeks. Right. now, have we have the rankings come out? We're nineteenth. Okay, we're so 19. we're still in the top twenty-five. And I still think we can beat Bama. I think so too. I think we can pass over Bama secondary after watching what Arkansas did. We almost did. beat Bama at Bama last year. Here's the problem with Bama. But our defense was playing a lot better last Here's year. Here's the problem with Bama though. There's mm-hmm. only one team in the SEC that I would argue plays the trenches. Better than Auburn, and that's Bama. Alabama. Well, a- Alabama is not as dimensional though. No. McElroy is not as good a quarterback as Cameron Newton. He's not as big a threat on the run. Well, yeah, they have he's a, Ingram. He's a, he's a great passer. He's a great passer, but, but see, that's not, okay. They don't mind that. But he we did like throw, having he did passers. throw two interceptions in the end zone. Last yes, he did. Or last week. And I think you forced McElroy to throw, and you could beat Bama. But that's but you the, got that's that's done. Yeah, in order you to, to force shut down to throw, you've got to stop Mark Ingram no and kidding. Trent Richardson. That's right. All right, let's see what else we got here. Notre Dame loses again. Uh, that I'm not surprised about. But you know what? None of these have been it's, blowouts. No, no, but nevertheless, Notre Dame still got a ways to go. Yeah. Bama gets a big win over Arkansas. That's well, a they, really good Arkansas team. And Bama played like champions. They, yeah, they did. They came out down at the half on the road, and they, they buckled down. They played hard-nosed football, and they won. That was a tough game against Arkansas. And a lot of people say, well, Bama's not the team they were last year. They sure look like it to me against Arkansas. Definitely in the second half. That is half. a good team. Is Michigan for real? Uh, without Denard Robinson, Robinson, I'd say... I. He'll be back. Yeah, he'll be back. He'll be I back. put I put Michigan in the top ten at the end of the year. How about Ohio State? Are they for real? Ooh, too early to tell. I think oh, that Ohio State team is really good. They're I good, agree. I don't think they've been truly tested yet. They haven't yet. been really tested. But they my God, that's any, a good team. They haven't even faced any real Big East competition. Two important games coming up in the NFL. Um, you got, uh, well, one actually, it's tonight, Bears versus the Packers. Go Two Packers. Eight. You go with the Packers? I because know someone is a big I Bears want, fan. I want to see, uh, Jay Cutler is such a whiny little bitch. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. He is a whiny he thing, He blames he? everything on everybody else. He's like, I'm so glad he didn't go to South Carolina. Because South Carolina fans have to blame somebody, and you can't redirect that much blame. But Jay Cutler manages to blame everything on everybody else. And he can throw the football. All right, one last quick thing here. One last quick thing. Uh, this could be, uh, is this going to be a publicity problem for the NFL? The Eagles may be good. They may be maybe. good. They they're, may be good, good with Michael Vick at the helm. Right. Will winning a Super Bowl get Michael Vick the forgiveness he needs from the Philadelphia fans? From the fans? Oh, the fans love him already. The Philadelphia fans won't care. They'll, they'll go out. They'll... I'll shoot a few dogs. This themselves. is yeah. This is the truth. You can you can pretty much get away with murder in Philadelphia if you can get them. In you the can playoffs. sure get away with murder in the NFL because there's right. people in there now have probably have gotten away with it. All right, we gotta get off the air. That's it. Give you for sports first tonight. We'll be right back with CulvertRadio.com.